to me, if you start them week one, there's more risk inherently that something goes wrong. Anything goes wrong with the rookie quarterback, and then he has to reset. You know, he's he's got to go back to some of the, the original things he had to work on. Whereas, just take your time. I, I don't think anybody believes this is a playoff team. So why not give it an extra few weeks if you think you can figure some things out, which gets to get it settled, right? Get it settled. As much as you can. Yep. I don't think Greg and I are sitting here telling you that by week five, this will be a top five offensive line. But figure out what you have up front. Settle it. And when you feel like you can trust at least four of the five guys, then you throw them out there. But it also goes beyond the offensive line. I think we forget how new this offense is and how much turnover was done. New scheme. New OC. Uh, tight ends brought in, right? Two of your three tight ends on the roster, new to this football team. The wide receiver room is completely different than it was last year, especially with Kendrick Bourne starting on the pup list. Your new OC, by the way, hasn't called plays on a weekly basis since 2009. So why don't you just try to settle those things, straighten them out, and when you feel more confident in those elements, then you play Drake May. Nobody's going to care. If we're sitting here having a conversation, Greg, you and I, in 2025 in December, and Drake May is a legitimate franchise quarterback, mm -hmm. nobody's going to give a shit if he played week one or week seven of this season. Yep. Nobody's going to care. It's not even a conversation, which leads me to my final point. The very fact that we had this conversation and entertained the idea of Drake May starting week one, that's the biggest story here. Dan Orlovsky told you this guy might take two years to yep. be ready. Greg and many others said, hey, look, it might take him a year. It yep. might be later in the year when he starts. The fact that we even had this conversation, Greg, to me, is the biggest story of all because that tells us Drake May has developed and he's developed more rapidly than many of us thought he would. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely agree with that, Nick. And, um, you know, that's very exciting. And I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to, uh, that if he, for him to prove me wrong, I mean, I do think, you know, there, there's a lot of things that he's, he's doing well. You still see on film, he reverts back to some of his US, UNC stuff where, you know, he'll, he'll step up into pressure um, where he doesn't really need to do that. Uh, sometimes he makes really nice, subtle pocket movement to get away from pressure and to deliver the ball. But other times he's moving into things and, you know, uh, I, I think that, Nick, I think, you know, the first point you brought up to me is really when this whole sort of discussion this week started, like, that's sort of where I was, which is, okay, somebody has to tell me what is the upside to Drake May starting week one? I mean, you know, if he, do we think this team's going to be a playoff team? No, no, nobody does. I mean, the chances of that are very long. So, you know, what are we talking about here? Like, you know, I, I know I was on TV and Michael Hawley's like, well, you know, you need to, you need to win as ga many games as possible. Okay. You know, and this isn't just specific to the Patriots. We see it all the time in the NFL. And this is what I almost always say when, when you talk about a new offensive coordinator and new scheme, let alone all the new personnel that you pointed out pretty much every time by book, I say, okay, it's going to take half a season for that stuff to come together. You're hoping, yeah. you're hoping to hold water until it starts to click for everybody. And then the second half of the season, you want to sort of see everything go on an upward tra trajectory. This whole season is not about trying to win week one against the Bengals. It's about Drake May's development. And that dude is not going to be helped if he's thrown to the wolves even if he could pick up all of the answers and blitz uh, solutions and counters and this and that in the next week or two or three, it's about developing him long-term into the franchise quarterback. You and I watched this preseason and go, that's the good stuff. Okay. So if it takes some time, it takes some time. This was the right decision. It was too convoluted. We took a scenic route that really wasn't all that scenic. It was really just more frustrating listening to Rod's comments, but it's over. It's done with. And so, yes, absolutely. Just as I did, everyone should take, uh, you know, their fair shot at Gerard for the PR stuff. PR stuff is for now over. The competition has been won. It's Jacoby Brissett's job. He was treated like the starter from the get go. And lo and behold, he's going to be that week one. Now the question becomes okay, when does that change happen? As, as you said, Gerard Mayo said today for the season, was asked to kind of qualify that, said he didn't want to get into hypotheticals. I never expected him to name like a week one starter. 
because if he does that, we come back next week and have to do this whole thing again. And that, to me, is just sort of a placeholder, which is basically we'll have the conversation when it's time to have the conversation. It's not going to be after week one, pending an injury. That's just the reality of it. I've said that. They're not going to want to done Jacoby versus said it wouldn't make sense. So when is the right time to have that conversation? I will say, based on Gerard Mayo's tone today, seemed maybe later rather than sooner, but based on Drake May's play, and this is what the competition was to me, yeah. how much could he close that gap? How much could he put pressure on the coaching staff? How much buy-in could he get from the locker room to kind of force the hand where he has to come in? It should be sooner rather than later. I'm still looking at October. I've talked about week five. If it's week six, week seven, you know, whatever, I still think that move happens in October. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to get 17 games of Jacoby Brissett. Right. And if we do, something's probably gone incredibly right. Yes, exactly. In that case, like he's earned that and they're winning games. What are you guys looking at as the timeline? I'll go first. I, I do agree. I think it's going to be sometime in October. And also, a vote of confidence for Drake May. Bailey Zappi was cut and then signed elsewhere. We were talking about early in camp, even kind of late. Well, if, you know, Jacoby Brissett either goes down or, God forbid, something happens, would they want to put Drake May in? Because you can't put that genie back in the bottle. Yeah. Now we know if something were to happen to Jacoby, who's gotten hurt in two of the preseason games after sacks, it's going to be Drake May's show. So I do feel like that is a little bit of a vote of confidence in the rookie because, as you mentioned, we have no idea if they intended to start him at all this season or what that plan was. But I do think, unless Jacoby lights the world on fire, which I think is unlikely because of the supporting cast, which does need some help, it's going to be after about a month when the offense realizes, like, we need some juice to really be a threat to these opposing defenses. It's week five. Week five against Miami here <laughs> after the road trip to San Francisco. That's the landing spot. It makes too much sense. You can't go in and say that right now because – uh, again, you're not gonna you're not gonna sit here and say Jacoby's our starter for four weeks and then we're turning it over to the rookie. That's just not how this works. You have to have that quote unquote vote of confidence in your starting quarterback. Where if he plays well, and again, if that can change, if he does play well, yeah. as you mentioned, if he plays 17 games and lights the world on fire, and they're a fringe playoff team, you're not just gonna turn it over to the rookie quarterback just because he's your you know your tabbed future, right? Um, but I do think that that sweet spot is that week five, six, seven area. Three straight home games, I believe. One, I think, is overseas in London. But um, yeah. th you have a gauntlet to start this year. Let Brissett kind of, again, you don't want to let him take the hits, but that's kind of what this looks like right now. Get the offensive line figured out. You play San Francisco. You play the Jets. Get those behind your belt uh, and come back strong against Miami week five with Drake May. And you imagine Jacoby might not play great in those games, right. right? They're really tough opponents, so that would open the door for Drake May. I've been week five, week six, especially because you would shorten the season down for yeah. Drake May. He gets that college season. He only has to play 12 or 13 games. Hopefully you avoid the late rookie wall, but – the other thing that Taylor mentioned is Jacoby Brissett's gotten hurt both of the mm -hmm. first two preseason games. Like, we could be seeing Drake May week one, week two out of necessity. So maybe it does happen sooner rather than later, even though Mayo just kind of said Jacoby is the guy for the season as of right now. How patient are they going to be? It's easy to start him week one or not start Drake May week one. But, like, we get to week four, week five, it's going to get louder and louder no matter how good Jacoby plays. So there's a bunch of things that I've thought about here over the last couple of weeks and even in the in the last few days, you know, for instance, the the push to start Drake May. And I like I said, I, I, I've been talking about this. I'd never felt like it was a competition. So um, this didn't surprise me in the least bit. But like if you start Drake May in week one and you're getting your ass kicked. And it's the second quarter and you're down 21 to nothing in Cincinnati, 24 to nothing. He's thrown two picks. He's fumbled two snaps. Like the right thing to do for your team is to put him on the bench and put Jacoby Brissett in there. But in the long-term future of your franchise and Drake may, do you really want to put the guy on the bench? And like, so if he gets off to this sort of start, you can't, and you have to think about these things. You have to think about it in detail. Like, it's one thing to go from Brissett to May if Brissett's the one stinking up the joint, even if it's in week one in, in, in Cincinnati. Like, hey, it's 24 nothing in the third quarter. You know what? Screw it. Let's put Drake in there. Doesn't mean Drake's starting next week, but let's – hey, he's going to get some experience. The other team sort of let their foot off the gas pedal a little bit. Let's get him some reps, and who knows? Maybe he goes out, balls out completely, and then you have a decision to make for week two. I think the other part of this is – and you brought it up, you're getting off to the slow start. So week two is their home opener. It's against Seattle. Mike McDonald, terrific defensive mind, you know, doesn't have his full personnel yet, but like I expect that to be a tough game regardless. What if Brissett's starting and you're struggling 
I think it'll be pretty early. You're going to hear the boo birds. You started to hear them last year. You heard them the year before with Mac. Like there's not a lot of patience here. And they're at this stage of the, the process. There should be patience. Like that, that should be the thing at this point, guys, you're not winning 10 games. And I know you want to see Drake, but like take the big view, but fans, when they're drinking, you know, 16 ounce buds for, you know, $20 a pop, and they'd spent three hours in the parking lot in the sunshine and in September, um, you know, getting all ramped up for the game, getting all lubed up, like they're going to boo. And you got to be strong and you got to be like, no, we have a plan and we're sticking to it. 